God bless you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I have such an awesome message for you that the Holy Spirit gave me to give to you this morning, right now. If this doesn't bless your socks off, nothing will. As Ward Chandler used to say from the Little Brown Church, a wonderful pastor that I had such admiration for, if that doesn't move you, your wood is wet. <laughs> he used to say your wood is wet. I never heard these things, you know. I don't know where they get these things from, but it was precious. Father, we lift up our oil before you this day. Oh, Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you that you are there, Lord, with us every single day. You are with us in a strong way. Thank you for this day. We thank you for this day. We thank you that we have the ability to get up, get out of bed. And Father, we keep our minds stayed upon thee. We may not feel perfect, Lord. We are not perfect, Lord. But in you, we can do all things. We are not here for what man would think about us. We're here for what you would think about us and what we can do for you and lead someone to Christ today to be up encouraging, uplifting, looking to you, Lord God. And we thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing on our lives. Thank you for your fragrance on us. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. Amen. So much is going on. Oh, my, such awesome letters. Such letters I read from you guys just brought, brought me to tears. Uh, <clears throat> wonderful message. I uh, heard Sunday, well, several wonderful messages, actually. But I was hearing a message Sunday about... The wise man and the foolish man, you know, they built their house on the rock and the other one built his house on the sand. And you think of a sand and you think of the beach and how the beautiful breeze and the soft music and it's so romantic and it's, you know, so uh, inviting by, uh, you know, it's the whole thing, the whole uh, nuance of it is just something that we just think is such such a, attractive you know so attractive to be on the beach but the beach is the sand remember and so we think about the bible how it says do not let your foundation be upon the sand but have your foundation on the rock on the rock of jesus christ because there is nowhere else to have a foundation that is going to give you hope and peace and joy. You're going to have all the nine fruits of the spirits. You're going to have love. You're going to have joy. You're going to have peace. And you say, but I don't feel love this morning. Well, let me tell you, all you have to do is read a few examples of lives and you can turn around and you could say, I have God. If you have God, you can get up in the morning and you can get your eyes off of yourself. So many of us are consumed with ourself because we have a sad life, it seems. We have so many things going on in our past, so many things going on in our present, so many things that we just don't have anything to look forward to, some people feel like. Some people feel like they can't go on. You know, without this or without that, I want to tell you, God made you perfect. And he has a destiny, a destiny. And a destiny is something, I truly see this, as something that we walk into every day. Destiny is today. Destiny is not something 10 years down the line because the Lord is coming. He's coming. We don't have 10 years, in my opinion. We, you know, maybe 50 years ago, yeah, we would have had 10 years. But today, the Lord is coming. And so I try every morning to say, Father, 
I get my eyes off of myself and I look to you. And I'm also going to look to the body, Father, and say, what can I do? What can I do for your body, Lord? Is there anything I can do? Anything. You know, it, it's going to be a hard video. I can tell it's just so moving when the Lord gave me this word for you today. Just a lot of things. I, I just wanted to say, when Stephen passed away, I, I sat on the cement and I thought, what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to do now? <laughs> because everything I did was with Stephen. We had over 20 years of ministry together. He did things I couldn't do. All of a sudden that was gone. What was I going to do? What was I going to do? How could I continue in something that was all consuming of my life before he died? What would I do? And I finally came to this conclusion, whatever I can do, I did things Stephen didn't do in the ministry and whatever I could do then, I could do it now with Christ and the things that I wanted to do, I could then find a way to do it. I would find a way. You know, they say, if you can't go around the tree one way, go around the other way. Find a way. Persistence. Persistent, be persistent. I want to say to Lewis, Lewis from New Mexico, send me your story. I would like to read it. I think your story is awesome. I, I know from what I read from all of your letters that you send to the ministry, how God has been so forefront with your life. He's been in the forefront of your life. He's allowed you to go through all of these hard times for such a time as this, for such a time as this. God is keeping you here. You know, I thought of the other day when Dad and I were coming home back from church because I've been attending with him on Sunday mornings now as a, as a uh, support to my father. And so... Uh, I've been going with him and I said you know dad it's just unbelievable everybody from these little churches that we knew they're all gone I mean passed away they are in heaven 99% of them are gone I said who is left you and me dad and maybe one or two others that's it the whole church has either left moved to another town the younger ones but the ones that were our age or older, they're all gone. They're all in heaven. But I said, you know, Dad, there's a reason we are still here. There's a reason. I want to tell you, there's a reason. There is a reason. You say, everything is against me. I want to say, there is a reason. You are still here. There is a reason, and it's no other reason except God, because you believe in God, you love God, and God is the reason you are still here. God still has a purpose, a destiny. It's up to you every day to say yes or to say no, and it's up to you to say, I will do it. I will do it. So I just want to be encouraging to you. I have, I want to say also a big God bless you to Jeffrey in Florida. And um, I'll get the oil to you in the mail, Jeffrey. God bless you. Thank you for your donation. And also um, I am praying for you, Jeffrey. You know, we all need to lift each other up in prayer. Also, another letter came in from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And God bless you. Thank you for your donation to the ministry. And we are praying over you. You see, that was unspoken. I don't even know who sent it. I don't even know. People send something, a seed, because they're sending it in Jesus' name. They're doing it as into the closet because they want God 
to bless them back. And God is the only one that can bless you back truly. You can give to this ministry, that ministry. You can whatever. I, I always give. Every meeting I go to, I give something because I feel convicted to give them something, actually, because I know what ministry is. Ministry is work. Ministry doesn't just happen falling off the bed. You No, 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 no. Ministry is not just the hours you put into a ministry, but it's prayer that you do for people. It's the whatever capacity your ministry has. I was just asked to uh, do a preform a funeral <laughs> just yesterday for the associate pastor that helped Stephen and I start up Miracle Ministries. He encouraged us years ago. And so his wife called me the other day. She said, Susan, he thought of you as a daughter, you know, it was very nice. But here I am doing a funeral. Do you think that is, you know, something that I look forward to really? Because it's going to be so sad, so sad. Because a lot of the people, just because uh, Jim was a minister, you know, we all have things in our own family. And there was a lot of, uh, a lot of, pain in his own family all different kinds but he still held up the banner for god he still held up the banner so the lord told me he says you know jim was about the love chapter and so she asked me to say something and i was praying and the lord reminded me that's what jim was all about the love chapter if you ha you can have all those other gifts but you're just a clanging bell without love so I want to say to each of us, reminding myself as well, I am not putting myself on a pedestal, but um, we need to have the gift of love more than anything. Because there's no, uh, no offense is whatever you call that. Uh, you're either, you know, you're either charging in, in the football, you're either charging or your defense. And so... You know, the devil can't do anything to you, basically, when you have love. Um, anyway, I wanted to read a, just a real short thing here. The Lord put on my heart. Also, several serious prayer requests came in to the ministry. And um, so we just want to uh, lift up also um, Chantel has serious family issues going on. She prayed for answers and found the website, the videos in uh, Jesus' name. She says, I am so thankful that I found you. I am watching your videos since this morning. And so she has a lot of issues that we would just want to remember her family and her in our prayers. She lives in South Africa. Uh, she's worked all of her life with the United Nations. Uh, so many, 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 a big, big story here. But she ended up with two abandoned kids, one girl and one boy, three months old. Can you believe this? And just took them on in her own family. Just took them in. It's a long story to make it short. Uh, in 2001, I was retired and we moved to South Africa. Now my kids are 15 years old. My son was born in the street from a mute, deaf mom, probably raped. She was living in the streets. She had a lot of problems. He was always sick while in uh, Kinshasa. He would have a malaria every month, but since we moved here, he has never been sick. In 2010, we had a very hard time. He was full of anger. He did some crazy things, throwing knives at me, insulting me, beating me. After this, I became very sick for 20 days. I could not eat or sleep, and I went to the hospital where they finally kept me for three days. I came back and I did not feel better. Finally, some Christian people prayed for me and I was healed. You see, since three years, my son is boarding school and he comes home only once a month. I understand he has a lot of wounds in his soul. It is hard for a boy not to have a father. He loves sports, went three times to the championship for athlete. He is running the 18 
100 mile and 800, oh, meter, excuse me. He is playing rugby and soccer. Also, he likes sports so much, but his studies are suffering. We need, we are not sure that this year he will pass his grade. He is grade 11. So please pray for him, uh, uh, for Jean. Pray also for my daughter, Ta Tabita. She is very creative, likes to paint, but she is very slow, has a problem with the time. Uh, who she, She's always late. Always pray for, uh, also, please pray for me. I found you because I Googled prayers for tinnitus ringing in the ears. <laughs> I don't know how that came, how I came up for that. But thank you, Jesus. That's all I got to say. God knows how to get a hold of it. I'm telling you, people have found out about this ministry. I have had so many letters over so many years. A meeting I spoke was asked to speak in, uh, be the uh, speaker up in Central California a couple of years ago. He said, Susan, I don't even know how I found you. I don't even know how I, I was writing my whispers at that time, you know, uh, words that the Lord gave me and I would send them out in an email grouping. And he says, I don't even know how you ended up in my inbox. He says, I never signed up for anything. And I do not market anything. So we neither one of us could figure it out. But he says, I thank God. I thank God. It was totally supernatural. Okay. I just want to, there's that one, that prayer request. Also, there's another one uh, that came in from Debbie. Uh, says, I was born with a cleft lip and cleft palate, and my nose, lips, jaw, and palate are extremely deformed. I have been bullied all my life. I am extremely deformed. My daughter, Greta, was also born with a cleft lip and a cleft palate, and her nose, lips, jaws, and palate are extremely deformed. Could you please pray that Greta and I are both healed and restored to normal? excuse me, so that we are both no longer extremely deformed in the name of Jesus. We pray and we believe for Debbie and for Greta, this cleft palate and lift a uh, lip and palate and nose and, and lips and jaw. Be thou whole, heal now in the name of Jesus, cleft palate, lip, jaw everything perfect in the mother and the daughter in jesus name in jesus name holy spirit holy spirit and also father god for for uh we pray also father god for the sister in south africa in the name of jesus for this son and this daughter that you Heal them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, totally, completely. We speak to the grades. We say, come up, come up, come up. We speak to anything that might be in his body, in his blood system, from this mother, in the name of Jesus. And we say, blood be whole, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And for the daughter, in the name of Jesus, that she would be whatever is going on inside of the body, in the mind, in the body, <coughs> whatever it is. We thank you, Lord. You heal it now in the name of Jesus. We also pray, Father God, for uh, Bajander. Please pray for my family. My mom has got meningitis and her left half of her brain isn't functioning properly in the name of Jesus. We speak to that meningitis. Leave her in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I, just, I just heard that scream. You know, these things are spirits. They really are. <laughs> I just heard it scream as it was leaving. And the joy, the joy, the joy. Poof, poof, poof. I just feel the joy <laughs> coming over the family. You know, sickness. <laughs> oh, gosh. Here we go. Sickness brings sadness, but the power of God. 
I have been floored on the floor. <laughs> I've been floored on the floor from God so many times. So many times. One time my daughter and myself, we were just floored. God floored everybody that night. The evangelist came around and he would just say, I don't even know, remember what he said. He just said something like, bless them, Lord. And everybody just went poof, poof, poof down and started laughing we all started having the joy of the lord was so contagious we could not stop <laughs> oh my gosh it was awesome marilyn so glad i found your channel i'm a new subscriber thank you for your ministry please pay, pray for me to be free of seizures and lupus get out of her in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, leave her now. And anybody else, all you lupus spirits and seizure spirits, out. Bend your knee and get out in the name of Jesus. And also Richard says he's having real health problems. I'm terminal. Talk back if you would. In the name of Jesus, this terminal situation, get out of him right now in the name of Jesus. Now the Lord says, believe on me. Believe my report. You know, why would you want to believe the doctor's report if they just say, hey, you're going to die? What? What? That's no joy. There's nothing in that that's nice. So we're just going to flip it. Hey, you know, if I had one day left to live, if the doctors told me you got one day left to live, I'd say, I'm going to believe what Jesus says. By his stripes, I am healed, and I'm going to believe it, believe it, believe it, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what. Because then you have crossed the line that Jesus drew in that sand, and you've said, why should I believe something that's bad? I'm going to believe something. It's your choice. And then also, do what you can do in the natural I would start juicing if it were me because uh, juicing is awesome and herbs. I would, I would actually, this is me. I would never tell anybody to do this, but I have seen natural, uh, you know, herbs and juicing totally reverse these things. And this, uh, a lot of this, you know, I, I've never been a fan of chemo because chemo kills everything. You know, that's me. I'm not saying for anybody what to do. Okay, I want to read this and read the scripture before we run out of time. Uh, the Lord led me to read. He told me, go to your shelf, pick up Daughter of Destiny, Catherine Kuhlman's story. Now, I just obey God, okay? So I sat down here and I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to read out of this book? I don't know what to read because I started reading all of the letters coming in. And he says, you go get Daughter of Destiny. And he said, you sit down. And so I'm very obedient. I've learned how to be obedient, you know, by a lot of things I've done that I found out I should have been obedient. <laughs> okay. He just opened me right up. I just shut the book and I said, what is it? What is it? Boom. Here it is. Okay. Dear Catherine, I'm reading from page 189, those that have Daughter of Destiny. I suggest you go get the book. It's a blessing. Uh, I bought it secondhand. I never buy anything firsthand, except for, you know, God is free. He comes firsthand. Dearest Catherine, this letter is dated Christmas Day, 1974, at 5.30 in the morning. Dearest Catherine, 5.30 in the morning. Who gets up at 5.30 in the morning? <laughs> Dearest Catherine, I am writing this before my children awake on this Christmas morning. He's writing Catherine Kuhlman on Christmas morning. Because I want you to be the first person in this house to receive a present on our Lord's birthday. Three weeks ago, I asked the, and I know everybody's going to say, well, that's not the Lord's birthday that day. Well, you know, it's just a day we celebrate the Lord's birthday, so get over it. Three weeks ago, I asked the Lord what you would like for Christmas that no one knew about. You know, I always ask God, well, I want something from you for my birthday, Lord. And he always would give it to me, always, whether it's a dream, whether it's, you know, God is so good. He will give you your healing for your birthday or Christmas day or whatever. Keep knocking, keep on asking. And to all that knock, the door shall be opened. Okay. 
Three weeks ago, I asked the Lord what you would like for Christmas that no one knew about that would meet the desires of your heart. <coughs> Excuse me. This 0.12 millimeter toothed, T-O-O-T-H-E-D, toothed forceps was his answer. Let me explain what it means because I had no idea what I was reading. Like, what, what is this, Lord? For the last four and a half years, I have used this very instrument on every single cataract operation that the Lord and I have performed. You notice how he brings God into it? I love it, don't we? We all want a doctor like that, right? <laughs> It is in, indispensable. Can't you believe that? If we go to a doctor and say, are you a believer? Are you a Christian? If you're not a Christian, I don't want you to operate on me. <laughs> it is indispensable to me. It has, uh, it has three teeth on the end that are 0.12 millimeter long. You will need some means of magnification to see these teeth well. You need a, a magnification of it just to see the teeth. They are used to grasp tissue so that a needle can be passed through it while it is being held with firmness but gentleness. Isn't that just like our Lord? He holds us with firmness but gentleness. <laughs> The teeth must be perfectly aligned to grasp the tissue properly. Wow, think of this with our Lord. If they are uh, uh, mal-aligned one hair's breadth, they might as well be thrown away, for they will no longer grasp in the exacting in an exacting manner. Unbelievable. The reason this instrument and its function is so crucial, critical, excuse me, is because it is used for closing the wound after a cataract has been removed. Sounds like our Lord is closing the wound on our pain, our suffering, all of the things that we bring to him. He has to have that exact instrument to close the wound on the cataract that God removed out of our eye out of the pain that he's taking out of our heart. This means that the eye is wide open and there is no margin for error in the surgeon or the instrument. If, the, if this instrument is not grasping properly, causing any pressure to be exerted on an open eye, the contents from inside the eye would be pressed out and all the patient's vision compromised if not lost completely all of this surgery is done through an operating microscope under high magnification these forceps must grasp tissue one half millimeter thick and hold it firmly enough to pass a needle through it while exerting no pressure whatsoever on the open eye. I love this precision instrument. It has served me well and has been in the middle of many surgical miracles the Lord has performed. I love that how he gives God the glory. It has functioned perfectly for these four and one half years of use and now I want you to have it on this Christmas morning, it is intended to serve as a reminder from our Heavenly Father to you, here we go, that this instrument has been in my hand like you are in his hand. You are to him like this 0.12 millimeter forceps, grasping with fine, perfectly aligned teeth, whatever, he wants you to grasp at the time. You begin as a chunk of metal with no form or usefulness and by yielded to his will and dying to your own will, he has been able to make you into a perfect precision instrument in his hand. You're exactly what he wants you to be. He did not want you to be a pair of scissors 
or an instrument for extracting the cataract. He intended from the beginning of time for you to be a 0.12 millimeter toothed forceps holding the tissue so the great physician can do the stitching and the healing. Not many people in the world, in this world, are so yielded that God can make them exactly what he wants them to be, but you are. Our Father wants you to know, on this son's birthday, that he loves you beyond words and that it gives him great pleasure to have such a precision instrument as Catherine Kuhlman available for him to use as he wishes. Amen and amen. Beth uh, Vaughn, V-A-G-H-A-N, V-A-U-G-H-A-N. That story written for the better than any biographer could pen about the father's purpose in using a red-haired, freckle-faced girl from Concordia, Missouri, but also remained untold until now. How many untold stories of our own life are in our life? Many of us, I have said many times, you know, Stephen wrote a song years ago, you ain't nothing till you into the hands of the master. <laughs> you ain't nothing till you uh, let him play you on, you know, like an instrument, like you're an instrument. Unbelievable. <clears throat> and all I got to say is that is what the Lord had me to give you. And uh, of course, the scripture that came to my mind, number 13, on uh, the Bible Gateway, Psalms 139, number 13, for you formed my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will give thanks and praise to you for I am fearfully and wonderfully. Thank you, Jesus. We are wonderfully made. Your Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and skillfully formed as if embroidered with many colors in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance and your book in and in your book were all written the days that were appointed appointed daughter of destiny you are a daughter a son of destiny your eyes have seen my unformed substance and in your book were all written the days that were appointed for me for me when as yet there was none of them even taking shape. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh God! How vast is the sum of them! If I could count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time this morning now. Lord, we ask that you bless everybody that needs direction, guidance, a healing, whatsoever. Vast. You have so many, so many things, Father, that you heal us of. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you. It is not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit. And in the name of Jesus, we say, be thou whole. We say, I claim my healing. We say, I choose to believe you, Father. Whose report shall you believe except God's? His is the only report that is true and just and faithful and everlasting. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're not going to complain, Lord. We're going to get up and say, what can I do for you 
this day, Father. How can I make a difference in somebody's life? In Jesus' name. It's not about us. It's about Him in us. I love you. Have a blessed day. Jesus walked in this world of darkness. Jesus walked in this world of pain. He was sent by the heavenly Father. He was saved for you and for me. Gosh, your eyes in the pool of sight. Gosh, your eyes in the pool of you can see. Gosh, your eyes in the pool of sight. Gosh, your eyes in the pool of you can see. His throne in hell. Jesus left His throne for you and me. He was sent by the heavenly Father. He was sent for you and for me. Gosh, your eyes in the pools of silo. Gosh, your eyes in the pools Gosh, your eyes in the pools of silo. Gosh, your eyes in the pools and you can see. Deal with nail on the cross at Calvary. Jesus nailed on the cross for you and me. He was sent by the heavenly Father. He was sent for you and for me. Go wash your eyes in the pools of silence. Go wash your eyes in the pools and you can see. Go wash your eyes. Go wash your eyes in the pools and you can see. Go wash your eyes in the pools of silo. Go wash your eyes in the pools and you can see. Go wash your eyes in the pools. Go wash your eyes in the pools and you can't.